Tonight, New Scene takes a special 30-minute look at the relentless economy that's gripping our nation. America is suffering its worst recession since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Brother, can you spare a dime? Good evening and welcome. I'm Stephen Comer. And I'm Alice Kim. Thanks for joining us. The economy affects how we work, live, get around, and spend our free or not so free time. And we begin with real estate. In the early 2000s, San Diego was enjoying one of its biggest housing booms in history. People wondered if the housing bubble would ever burst, and it did, unfortunately. With sky-high housing prices gone, it's now the future of San Diego real estate left hanging in the air. VBO has more. High unemployment and high inventories are keeping the real estate market down, leaving homeowners uncertain about what's going to happen next. Many people are losing their homes in this troubled economy, while others are desperately trying to hold on to their properties. This economy is relentless. Some have lost everything. A heartbroken daughter shares the difficult times her parents had with their home. It's been three years, but even after the decision is made and the house is gone, the pain remains. My dad went through a bout of depression. Uh, my mom, she's just sad all the time because she really misses our old house. Nationwide, there are more than 7 million households in some form of financial trouble and are facing the possibility of foreclosure. Here in San Diego County, there are nearly 25,000 foreclosure homes. There are government modifications to help those who are trying to keep their homes, but for those who can no longer afford the mortgage payments, there are the options of short sale and foreclosure. So how many people are actually facing foreclosure? Well, there's just no clear answer. Right now, nearly 40% of homes on the market are distressed sales, but there could be more, something realtors and bankers call shadow inventory. Shadow inventory is property that will be hitting the market and hasn't yet gotten there, whether it's because a person isn't willing to sell their homes at this price, even if they may be behind in payments for it, or a bank that is either going to short sell or eventually foreclose on a home. The banks are holding onto some properties because they don't want to lose money themselves and depreciate San Diego's housing prices further. Until all these shadow properties come into view, there will be uncertainty about whether or not the market can stabilize and rise or find a new bottom. Do they have any other options? No. There was nothing except for foreclosure. They could have stayed there the, because they give you a notice of 90 days. They could have stayed there to the 90th day and they would have came in and kicked them out anyways. With Liz Potter, I'm VBO News Scene. For those hanging on to their homes by a thread, it's the uncertainty of where their next payment is coming from and if they can make it before the bank forecloses. For the thousands who have already lost their homes to this voracious economy, the challenges are quite different. Yes, it is. And for them, the big question is, where do we live? The answer invariably is someplace more affordable and almost always someplace smaller, which brings up another challenge. Where do they put all their stuff? Alex Miller Pastore shows us one woman's experience with economic downsizing. Every time Alex Zaragoza moves, her stuff moves too. In the last six years, since I was like 20 years old, I must have moved like eight times. After divorcing her husband two years ago, Alex went from a large two bedroom apartment to a studio. He went back to England where he's from. So I was left with all these things. Like it's not like we divided, I just kept everything. And keeping everything has been expensive. To store her possessions, Alex rented a pod. After about three months, Alex realized she couldn't keep up the payments, so she sold a few things. Then she traded her studio for a roommate situation and traded the pod for a storage room. She was able to maintain the locker for about seven months when she discovered the company she was working for was going out of business. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. I have no money. Do I want dinner or do I want this adorable owl that I found at an estate sale? Her remaining belongings went from storage to the street. I got rid of like as much stuff as I could. Alex made $400 at the yard sale, but spent $900 in storage costs. That's a loss of $500, not to mention her stuff. Taking stock of it all, Alex decided to move home with her mom, and she also made a realization. I 
I'm getting rid of all my stuff just for the sake, sake of having a little bit of independence, you know? And it's like, it's kind of was just like holding me back more than making me free. <laughs> While the downsizing journey has been difficult, Alex is learning some lessons can't be measured in dollars and cents. You don't need all these things. And it, it, and it has made life easier and made me feel like less attached to silly things. Just like be happy that I have whatever I have. In South Park, this is Alex Miller Pastori, New Scene. The trend of multi-generational housing is on the rise. Parents, children, and grandchildren are moving in together and pooling their resources. For those less fortunate, downsizing can mean living out of their cars, sleeping in homeless shelters, or living on the streets. We'll be right back. We went out of business because the, it was a furniture store, so I guess it affected mostly when people started losing their homes. It's a buyer's market, and, and everyone is, is kind of a working together to help you purchase something. I had to downgrade my house situation, so from a two-bedroom to a one-bedroom. Mom! Mom! What? You can't find Ichabod. What? You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The bust smallest them. moments can have the biggest beat impact on a child's life. Let's get a little bit rowdy. R-O-W-D-Y. Take time to be a dad today. All those boys are much too much. Those boys. Welcome back. Like it or not, America currently depends on oil for energy. It runs our factories, it heats our homes, and in the form of gasoline, it runs our cars. Gas is expensive, and here in San Diego, it's well over $4 per gallon in most places. This summer, it's a good bet San Diegans will see gas prices top $5 per gallon. For many, added fuel expense has reached the breaking point. The solution? Find a cheaper way to get around town. Nico Will explains. Vespa scooters were developed in Italy after World War II as an economical means of transport for the masses. They were inexpensive to manufacture, used fewer raw materials than cars, and were nimble enough to negotiate streets savaged by war. Alex Kahn of Motorsport Scooters says America's current situation has some similarities to a war-torn Europe. Oh, but definitely the economy, bad shape, high gas prices, you know, and the streets and stuff too are getting more congested and there's less parking. So the scooters kind of are starting to really take off here in the U.S. too. Jen Jones lives in Carlsbad. She has a job and makes a decent living. But as gas prices crept higher and higher, she felt the pinch. In the summer of 2008, gas prices got really, really high and my my very, my 10 year old car started having problems and I saw, foresaw a, a situation where I wasn't gonna be able to keep my car on the road. She heard a story on NPR about the fuel efficiency and relative low maintenance costs of scooters and decided to buy one. She found a buddy for $2,000. The savings in gas alone is dramatic. So in my car, I was spending Per fill up about $40, $40 a week in gas and on my scooter it's about $4 a week for the same same trips and commuting that I do. Jen Jones hasn't driven her car in over two years. Alex Kahn says Jen's story isn't that unique. Every time gas like spikes up in prices our, our sales spike up right with it. In fact we've like printed out the graphs before and our graph matches the gas price graph. It's like exactly the same like you know people start exploring and looking at scooters as soon as gas prices shoot up. Unlike many local businesses, Vespa Motorsports is not suffering because of high gas prices. In fact, they just moved to a new location and larger building. Even the mayor came for a recent grand opening celebration. I don't get to wear clothes like this as mayor except the beer festivals and scooter outfits. Incidentally, his wife rides a scooter. Many scooterists will tell you they came for the affordability and fuel efficiency, but they stay for the joy of riding. For Jen Jones, who suffers from depression, Owning a scooter has had an even deeper impact. 
just getting out in the sunshine and, and being having the air in my face and in my hair and it feels so it feels great when you're on a scooter. It really feels great. So I it helped me mentally not need any kind of um, additional drugs to combat depression. So there's I owe a lot to to scooting. I'm Nico Will, New Scene. For those who live close to where they work and shop, a bicycle may be another great option. The cost of gas is zero, and it's a great way to get some exercise while you're getting to your destination. Yes, bikes and scooters are a great option, Alice, but many San Diegans are also discovering that public transportation can save them the pain at the pump. Buses and trolleys can get you almost anywhere you need to go around town and at a fraction of the cost. What's big and red and saves you money? It's the San Diego Trolley. Although there are many kinds of public transportation in San Diego, only the trolley gives you access to the city and its surrounding communities for five bucks a day. You can ride from San Ysidro to San Diego, La Mesa to La Jolla. Downtown and around town, the trolley can take you just about anywhere you want to go in San Diego. And for places the trolley doesn't go yet, it may just be a matter of time. It is going to have to expand to certain places up through the um, areas where people work. The trolley is owned and operated by the Metropolitan Transit System, or MTS, and it's only one of the ways San Diegans get around America's finest city. There has to be al alternative ways. We have to uh, include our, our bus transportation system. Ah, uh, yes, the bus. Another great way to move from point A to point B and still have something left to spend when you get there. And with public transportation booming, Councilman Young did say they were expanding, right? Well, we definitely have cut uh, when it comes to tra public transportation. You heard right. Even the state is robbing Peter to pay Paul in this economy. In these tough times, the state of California is taking away, for example, for MTS, about $15 million in the last year or so. Well, then what are you going to do? That's a question a lot of people are asking these days. For complete information on route and ticket information, visit sdcommute.com. Airport shuttle services can also come in handy. They pick you up at your door, they handle your luggage for you, and they can drop you off at the airport curb for a very reasonable fee. And you avoid all the cost of parking. Okay, we'll be right back. I have to be more aware of where I'm going and like just going to the place that I really need to go to. I try not to use my car. I take the train, I take the bus. I bike ride sometimes. I live really close to my work, so most of it I most of the time I walk. I don't I don't I can't afford to drive. 